Coach, how uh, satisfied are you with so far with the install of a, of a new scheme? Uh, yeah, I, I was really satisfied, and I thought I thought the guys did a great job, and and we got a bulk of it taught, and now it's as we progress in the summer, and then obviously fall camp coming around the corner. You know, it's it's um, the continuation of that, and taking that from introductory level to advance on the details and, and mastering those the, the you know the system just from a terminology standpoint obviously assignment as well now that he got here like it was last thursday walk me through what your immediate plan is for donovan leary as now that he's on campus and just trying to get him adapted you know slowly yeah i think it's probably like it is for any other freshman you, it's it is adaptation and get them get them up to speed to a certain degree you, you, you don't want to overwhelm them right. they're going to be overwhelmed um no matter what position they are uh you know how how much football runs in their family, or how much it doesn't. You know, I think to his to his credit, I think he's done a really good job, and even just kind of picking his brother's brain about what to expect and some things to be on the lookout for, and some things that I think he wished maybe his brother would have done differently. And that was just him telling me, his parents telling me that. So he's got a great advantage built in there that he's got somebody that's been through it before uh, and can tell him the ins and outs of the transition of being a college quarterback. And so it's about just getting him comfortable and caught up to speed from a. Uh, not even caught up to speed, but just the introductory uh, building blocks of what we're doing and how we're doing it. And really, that's going to kick in when we get to fall camp more. Between now and then, it's more just getting comfortable with the surroundings. Very, um, Isaiah's obviously a very good talent. What, what's he allow you to do as an offensive coordinator? What's he give you as a play goal? Yeah, I think we're still learning that. You know, I think every every day is a new day for him, even as a wideout. I mean, this is a kid that has not played wideout for a, a, an extended period of time in his life. You know, most of his life he's had the ball in his hand. And so with that said, he's one that you do want to foster opportunities to have the ball in his hand. And um, he, he's that player, you know, that all coaches and media talk about. we got to get the ball. you got to figure out a way to get the balls to the, the football to Isaiah, you know. And... Uh, that's something that's earned and not given, and he, I think he's certainly on path to earn the, the right and the opportunity to do that. And so, it, he allows you with his background to be creative, and maybe how you how you, how that goes about happening. You know, obviously you do want a lot of it to happen kind of organically through the structure of the offense, which I think it will. But then you you think outside the box in ways that maybe he can touch the ball and affect the game. What stuck out to you about the way he's grasped wide receivers? You said it's only been a year. Like what, what stood out to you about how he grasps that or attacks it? Well, I mean, I see him working at his craft a lot, you know, on his own, and um, I think that, that that speaks volumes about him. And it's not just him; there's a lot of them to do, and, and most all of them do in the in the program. You see guys just working on their own and putting in their own time to develop their craft, and so I think he realizes that that, and this is me talking, not him talking. I think he realizes that that move, you know, for him last year was a good thing for uh, for him as a football player, and he's embraced that. Uh, on a daily basis, whether it's been the jugs machine or in the office with Coach McDonald on his own time asking questions or with me. And so he certainly embraced that move. And uh, as he continued just to refine, and, uh, you know, the details of the position, the route running, the, the depths and the, the cuts and those types of things, I think you'll just see a, a more and more comfortable player. And a comfortable player with ability usually is a productive player. Coach, does he remind you of anybody skill set wise you've worked with before? Well, not immediately. Uh, I think he is he is unique, you know, not just anybody that I've worked with in my immediate past. You know, I'd have to probably go back a little ways to, to find somebody that I could throw a name out that wouldn't mean anything to anybody, you know, probably. But, uh, you know, he he's just a good football player, and he's got great uh, confined small small space skills of, you know, in and, in and out of cuts. And um, he's just he's just a football player, you know. Playing quarterback as long as he, you know, all of us quarterbacks, we're just you know we're just ball players. We just have natural ability, um, and you know, I obviously say that tongue in cheek because he's got something different than a lot of guys that have played quarterback have. And uh, I think you you saw that last year sure. in the season, and we saw it in a fair amount in the spring. And we're going to need to see it a lot this fall for us to be productive. Coach Good. Walters kind of talked about how your offense kind of challenged his defense uh, throughout these workouts. How what have you kind of seen from his defense that's kind of you know made a challenge for you as a play caller? Well, they do a great job uh, defensively. The the structure and the scheme is, uh, I think, uh, you know, very problematic. I think it's very unique. Uh, it's very well coached and very thought out. The players believe in it, and that, that's usually equates to, to a good defensive unit. And I think that's what you see. You see guys that play with a lot of confidence and uh, a swagger, and uh, the the scheme itself creates you know challenges just because of the. It's kind of a unique look in the front standpoint, and 
Uh, and so we certainly have give and take, and, and that's good. We want to have give and take, right? You, you want to be on a team that has give and take offensive and defensively, and I think you saw that throughout the spring, and I think that's, that's a good thing for our football team when, there's, when there's, there's a little bit of both, both ways. With uh, Art Sikowski back throwing again, is, is there going to be an open competition for quarterback in training camp? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We want to see Art healthy, and um, I haven't got a chance to see him. I think he's getting close to getting to that point. I haven't got a chance to see him, you know, full speed Art. I uh, thought Tommy did a great job this spring and took advantage of being kind of the guy that got the bulk of the repetitions of him and RJ. And as Art gets um, back and closer to being fully clear and – um, you know, we, we certainly want to make that a competition to where those guys can show us, you know, both of who they are and how well they mastered the offense. And but again, I want to, you know, I think Tommy did a really nice job of taking advantage of the opportunity that was put before him this spring. And, and, and we, I think certainly Art has, has earned the right to, to have those same opportunities. And so I think there'll certainly be some 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 form of that in the in fall camp. How much does it help that your offense is unknown going into the opener? People don't know exactly what you're going to do here. How much does that help immediately and then down the road? Uh, well, from an immediate standpoint, I think you know, I, I think that would be to our advantage. Now, how much of an advantage is that? I, I don't know. I mean, it, but it's not a disadvantage. I can certainly tell you that going into week one. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Wyoming, we have a great deal of respect for Wyoming staff and their history of, you know, the way they develop their players and their teams. And, and so they're, they're, you know, they're going to have a pretty strong indication, I think. And, you know, just of, you know, what to expect, just even by the spring game, right? I mean, right. it was out there for public. So when you put that information out there and combine it with, you know, where I've been and maybe what Coach Bielema's track record's been, and, um, you know, I'm sure they probably have a little bit of curiosity about what exactly our game day offense will look like. And, and, and we'll keep it that way until the game time. And hopefully that'll be to our advantage to some degree. I assume you don't hold anything back for Indiana. No, right? You're oh no! You know, oh heck no! Ready. No, we're we're going we're going to go, we're going to go try to win, win, put our best foot forward, and play the best we can offensively uh, in, in our zero week game right out here against Wyoming, and that'll be a great challenge. Your uh, roster is pretty heavy on young offensive linemen. Are, are Bart and Tank Wright uh, really important to the future of the program? Well, you? yeah. I mean, sure they are. I mean, they're. I think any program, but specifically, you know, for sure ours and Coach Bielema's history and tradition of, you know, develop that room and, uh, you know, that's where it kind of starts for us offensively is, you know, up front and, you know, be able to run the ball and protect the quarterback. I mean, that's that's not proprietary to football or offense. I mean, I think most people would say that's where it needs to be built around. But certainly here at Illinois, that is something that is a we put a great deal of emphasis on and, and the recruiting and development and we'll continue to do so because as those guys go you know our offense is going to go because we want to run the football and and I really like where our guys our older guys are at and then I think they're going to set a nice bar for the young guys to come in and you know learn how to work and develop and uh, until it's their time and some of their times may be quicker than others. Can I ask your philosophy on the June camp season especially the two that you've had here on campus and what you try to you know, put together was a plan for you know, drill work and all the stuff because I've talked to campers that said the, the drill work and the instruction was pretty high and intense. Uh, just overall at our yeah, camp? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's like anything else. You Whatever you want to do, you want to do it right, right? And so when we when we host our camps here, I mean, I think we got a bunch of coaches and uh, coaching staff that, that, you know, loves football and love, loves what we do. And so when we get a chance to, to have a young man come on campus, I think, a lot of us have the opportunity and the ability to look through the lens of a parent, right? Because we all have a lot, not all, but a lot of us have children of our own. And, you know, I think that's easy to look at and say, what would I want my son to experience in the camp? You know, I would want him to, to walk away with some instruction that could help him make, be make him better. Uh, all the while being a, having a chance to be evaluated to sure. whatever level that looks like. So when you combine those two things and try to have a little fun with them, I think you put on a good camp. And I think we certainly put our best foot forward in our, camp, in our camps this summer. Brett mentioned the rule change this summer that allows the coaches to actually get out and coach, you know, yep. on the field with the players. So, what do you, how do you want to utilize that time that you've never had before? Yeah, it's it's great. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, it's it is new, and it you know, it, I, I, at first it kind of felt weird a little bit, you know, like wait a minute, uh, yeah, is this right? You know, so it, but once we did it, I mean, it's a great advantage. It's it's a really good rule, and and we're not like overdoing it. We're, I think we've got a really good feel for that. I think Coach did a really nice job kind of setting that forward. The, the main point 
the main emphasis for us in the summertime is being with tank and staff to develop strength conditioning to not interrupt that cycle. So there's only so many hours in a week you can be with them. So our time with them has been somewhat limited, but I think it's been the, about the right amount of time to, to remind them of some, some things that we did in the spring to kind of knock the rust off, to, to make sure we're talking and communicating the right community. You know, you're always worried as a coach when they're doing summer work on their own, are they doing it the right way? You know, like our, I mean, just some small detail, like is the quarterback, like, is the quarterback reading the progression right? You know, is he, is his footwork right? I mean, so, so sometimes they can work all summer long and, and do something that they think that may be helping them and actually can be counterintuitive, you know, to helping them develop as a player. So now we have a chance to be a little bit more involved in exactly what that looks like. And so I think that's a healthy thing for us and coaches across the country. How, how have the guys adjusted to the tempo off? And it's just, I assume training camp's going to take a lot of reps just to get them used to getting sad and not huddling. Yeah, I mean, I think they've done a nice job. I mean, really, I mean, I bet probably 50% of our guys probably played similar type structure in high school. And so when we transitioned to the spring, I don't think it was a huge shock to, you know, A, the guys that were here before, the way I understand it, the previous staff before Coach Bielmo, they played to, to some degree of that, you know, and then, then you combine that with the guys that in high school probably played some form of no huddle. So it's not like it completely foreign to them. Uh, particularly what we're trying to do, yeah, the details, the intricacies, the terminology, that was new. But I thought they, they, I thought they picked up on it really well. And they've already showed this summer they're, they're continuing to work on it. I saw them doing it on their own the other day just uh, as I was leaving work. I saw some guys just talking through it, you know, uh, the other day, which was pretty cool. And um, the work we're getting a chance to do with them is, is only reinforcing that. And this camp will be really critical for us to kind of put the polishing effect on that to this is our tempo that we're trying to play with. Got to be in great shape, which our guys are working hard on doing this summer. So I'm excited to see that unveil when it comes time to the season. Coach, you, you and your family all settled in or are you still moving in? We're, we're settled in. We're settled in. We're here. We're, we're lock, stock, and barrel. We moved in. Because your family was gone for most they of the time. Were, they were here. I was, oh, yeah, they were I, was they were, they were, I let them finish school okay. uh, in San Antonio. And uh, that worked out, you know, pretty good for, for them and for me, you know, I guess to some degree. It was tough, to be honest with you. It was the first time I've ever been through that. And it's just kind of part of the business and, and, and part of life, you know. I mean, professionally, people move for all types of different businesses and they're separated from the families. It's the first time I really experienced it. Uh, it gives you a new appreciation for when they're underneath their nose and sometimes kind of getting under your nerves, your kids are, you know, you can, it kind of gives you a new perspective in that. So I missed them greatly. It's good to have them here. And they've been, they've been excited. They were part of camp, my boys were, and they're, they're ready to get going here and be a part of the community and be a part of, uh, you know, Illinois football. How does being former high-level quarterback, how does that shape how you approach your quarterbacks? Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, being a quarterback, I don't know. Those other adjectives, I think those are debatable, <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can keep coming. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 you got a few more you can throw in there. No, it just, I, I don't know if it makes a great deal of difference have played the position, coaching. The, I think there's a lot of great quarterback coaches that didn't play the position. Um, so I don't think that that's, the, that we have the former players have the, you know, the market cornered on, being you know quarterback coaches, but I think I just try to simply use my experiences to help kind of have a proactive plan on how to address certain things, maybe to coach through certain things and to have some fun with them through examples. You know, at the, uh, each year that I'm away from it, I get better and better. You know, and these guys certainly hear their fair short star, <laughs> fair share of. Uh, uh, you know, as you would say, maybe uh, don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. You know, they get that part of me a little bit, but I think they do appreciate the fact that I played. I don't think they care about what level that would be. Uh, does that carry a little bit extra weight? Maybe that I played, you know, uh, at, a, at a high level, you know, like at a power five place and, and played. Yeah, I think it probably does. Um, but I think it's about, I think it, it's about relationships, right? I mean, it's this is so cliche, but it, I really believe this to be true. Like, I don't think any player really cares how much you know until they really believe that you care about them, you know. And um, and so the relationship part that's important. And then like, okay, let's go from the coaching perspective. But uh, my experiences have helped me become a better coach. Barry, from a recruiting standpoint, are you finding just organically based off of the connections that you've made in the past, and say Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, that? You know, the footprint is maybe a little bit bigger and you can walk into a school for the first time representing Illinois for a long, you know, in a while. Well, I think all of us in the profession have, have places that you're more comfortable, not, not necessarily more comfortable, but you're, you know, that, that's your roots and is your, 
your wheelhouse, so to speak. And mine, obviously, has spilled the buckle on my time in, in that area recruiting. Sure. And but I tell you what, it's been, you know, we have a footprint here that's really critical to us. And we are, you know, we are very active in that. Coach, Coach has made it very clear in our staff that this is our footprint. This is where we're going to really scour and try to develop and uh, relationships and, and recruit and evaluate the best we can. We're not going to take every kid within that sure. radius, you know. But we're going to certainly try to put our best foot forward with an evaluation standpoint across all positions. And then after that, it's about it's about where are your strong relationships. And so, um, you know, obviously a, a school that uh, like Illinois that's got a, a great tradition with the conference we're affiliated with, the football tradition, the academics, you know, that carries a, a great deal of weight. And so we're trying to use that as to to our advantage when it when it when we can at all possible. Having gone through a couple official visits here, what, what stands out about the that way camera heavy? <laughs> my hands going numb. <laughs> yeah, got the hand numb. That's why I'll answer a long question. I'll try to keep my questions. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. What stands out about the way that official visits are kind of constructed and happen here? I mean, they, they had a whole year before you got. Yeah, here. what sticks out to me is the the how in, how involved um, just our players are, you know, and and our staff is with people when they come in, their families. I think. I think when people come in and feel that, you know, I, I think they realize that, uh, you know, the family that's stitched on the new turf, I mean, that's, that's not, those aren't just words, you know, that's just not, I guess that's just a word, you know, that's just not a phrase or a word that we do to try to, to try to be cute. I think that's really kind of who we are. And I think that kind of, that kind of permeates, um, you know, through our organization when a, when a family comes in on the weekend. And I think that's kind of our secret sauce right now. And I think that's just kind of who we are. So that, that really stands out to me. Uh, along the same for recruiting wise, uh, evaluating high school quarterbacks, how much of that is, how much free reign has uh, Coach Bielma put on you, or is it a group effort? Yeah, I think there's safety in numbers. We have a lot of recruiting people around, and we have a guy that works directly with me and Taylor Reed, who, when we recruit and evaluate, you know, we spend a lot of time watching film, and so uh, coaches empowers, empowers all of us at all positions to to, uh, you know, to kind of evaluate and comb through it and see what we like and what we don't like, and he certainly has given me a, a, his, you know, my fair share of autonomy to go do that. I think it's kind of similar about the official visits. What kind of has allowed you guys to close as quickly as you have been able to on those visits with players? Well, I think, I think part of it is the timeline too. You know, like a, a lot of the kids now, it's kind of, you know, uh, they want to get this done before the season starts, and the official visit timeline is kind of winding down to a large degree, and so. You know the dominoes are starting to fall in the business, and so that that helps create momentum. But I think more than that, uh, I think that's part of it. I think more than that is when they come here, they experience something that they feel is genuine, and they see uh, a fit for themselves academically, socially, football-wise. You know, uh, acad I say academic, yeah, academically, football. I, that's also called athletically, and and then from a social standpoint, they, the kids they feel like and young 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 men are finding that this place is a good fit for them, and so. Uh, you know, when you know, you know, and I think that's what we're experiencing right now, and so that's been a real positive thing for us. Thank you. Thank you.